you have a custom property that you need to reduce the opacity of, and well, that's sort of hard to do, right? You can't do something like this and you're sort of stuck having to refactor your custom property, maybe like this, so you can actually use it and then reduce the opacity of it. That becomes annoying because then every time you wanna use the color, you need to put the RGB function first, or you could have two different custom properties for every single one of your colors, and that's not really ideal either. And there's probably five other solutions than what I'm sharing here that people in the comments will let us know about, but none of them are super convenient. But luckily we have relative colors in CSS now and they fix this problem. So let's start by jumping into this simple example that I have right here, uh, where we're gonna be looking and playing around with this a little bit. And, and I'm gonna be showing you how relative uh, colors fix everything, where you can see I have a few different uh, colors set as custom properties. And let's look at this one right here where that's my example, or actually that's my that's my div example. And in there we have the paragraph that has the background color on it. And right now that background color is just looking at the var brand, which as we just saw, we can't reduce the opacity of, but we can use relative colors now. So to do that, I actually come here and I can do an HSL around the entire thing. And that might seem a little weird. And that's, you know, this is where it didn't work when we tried doing something uh, like that, right? Uh, and it didn't work before just because that doesn't make any sense. But what we could do is actually come here and I could write from this color. And that's why it's a relative color because we're basing it on another existing color. And then the only thing is we still can't do the, the you know, over 0.5 or whatever. And this is the newer color syntax. I'm not dividing by anything. I sometimes get questions about this. So this is just the opacity after your forward slash. We're gonna see it a little bit more as we go through all of this. And then I'm gonna do an H space S space L. And then I'm gonna do my forward slash 0.5. So I'm saying my HSL values are all there and then my opacity is at 0.5 or 50%. And if you prefer a percentage, you can also come in and just do it as 50% or I'll reduce it to 20 just so we see that it actually does work. And yeah, you can see you can see it's working and that's pretty awesome. There's a lot more than you can do with it than just this though. Uh, and of course I'm using this as a custom property, but you could just come in here with whatever color you wanted. So, you know, I could come in with a hex code that I'm then getting the HSL values for. Uh, we need one more zero there for a valid hex. So we're actually making an HSL value based on this hex code that's getting mapped over to the HSL values. And then we have the over 50%, uh, or again, we could do 8.5 here. Both of those do work. And the HSL here might seem a little bit strange, but it actually can be kind of useful. And the reason for that, I've actually done this already on my H1. You can see I'm actually doing this as an RGB instead of an HSL, and I'm basing it on my color brand. And I have my re red is there, my green is there, but then I can come in and do a calc based on the blue. So if I just did my B here, we could just have the B and you can see the relative colors uh, right there is my actual brand color. Uh, but I can do some math on that and change the color if I want. So that's kind of interesting, right? That we can do things like that and manipulate the colors. And this could be also useful over here if we turn our attention back to that, because it could be that the lightness, it's too light right now. And I want to make it darker to make my text easier to read because now that the opacity is lower with my white text, it's not super clear. So I could do a calc and reduce it, right? So I could say like calc, is my lightness value, which whatever it would be from this, it's just taking that as the lightness value and I could say like minus uh, 50. And it's gonna reduce down to 50, it's going to black because I reduced it too much. Um, but you can, there you go, you can see, you know, if we do that as a zero, you'll see it's gonna get a bit brighter and then minus 20 and it's darkening it. You don't only have to do that though. I could just come here and actually put a value. So I could say that my lightness is actually 20% now and it's going to give it to me at 20, or I could say it's at 80% and not 820, <laughs> um, but just 80%. And now it's going to be actually the 820 there did seem to work and it got super bright. Um, yeah, you can put a, just a number here that you want. I want my saturation to be zero for whatever reason. Uh, so I can make it a 0% saturation as uh, my value, or again, we could do math and do a calc and manipulate that value if we want to. So let's undo some of those just to make it a little bit easier to read. Maybe we'll set that at 30%, uh, percent just so, you know, it's pretty clear. 
uh, what we're doing right there. And I know some people right now are probably already looking at this going, well, that's really long and that's really annoying. But just as a reminder, uh, in the old days, we would have, you know, if we wanted to do this with using these, well, first of all, I wouldn't be able to do it based on those values. And if you had an HSL value or something, you'd be coming in, breaking it all up, right? So you'd have to break each one of those up to allow us to overwrite each one individually uh, or then add a opacity or something and then have more custom properties. So it was annoying, right? So we don't have to do any of that anymore, which is really cool. Now, another interesting thing that you can do here, uh, which I'm not sure why you would do it, but when we do this, let's just make this back to RGB. Um, like that. So my color is coming from my color brand, or even let's change that. They, we, I put these here so I could do my primary, um, which goes to Rebecca Purple, just because I wanted to show that it could work um, with named colors, or even let's come here, Rebecca, you can just write it like that as well. It doesn't have to be a variable, and we can see it's coming through. Uh, and again, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but basically what doing the RGB or the HSL or whatever it is uh, here is doing is it's saying, we'll take the red and map it to the red, take the green, map it to the green, take the blue, map it to the blue. And then that's why we can do the manipulations because we can say, take that blue value, but do this with it. And then that's going to become the blue. Interestingly though, you can actually put RRB here if you wanted to, and it's going to take the red value as the red. It's going to take the red value as the green as well. <laughs> and we could also take the red here as the blue. Uh, and we didn't really have a lot of red in there. Let's do this with the blue maybe, B, 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 uh, and then we might get a bit more of a color coming through or a B, B, uh, let's do a B, R, B, B, just to see what we get. Um, you can see, anyway, we're getting different colors. I don't know why you'd wanna do this, but there's always people that come up with really creative ways of using stuff like that. So I did wanna show that it is possible. And I actually wanna show a couple more things with one making easier hover states and stuff with the buttons. And I wanna get into color schemes a little bit as well. But before we do that, there's an important thing that we do need to talk about, because I know there'll be comments about it, which is browser support. Right now, global support for it is at 85%, which, you know what, that's not too bad for something that's relatively new. Uh, and it is in every browser except for Firefox, but look at that, it's coming in Firefox as well. So it will be available in all the major browser engines very, very shortly. And I'd say at this point in personal projects, this is 100% safe to use. You can have fun with this, go crazy with it. Uh, and then just keep an eye on these browser support tables. I'll put a link in the description in case you're watching this in the future uh, to see what the up-to-date version of it is because uh, it won't be that much longer until you can actually start using this in production a little bit more. But uh, yeah, we're getting up there. It's pretty exciting. Uh, but yeah, let's jump back into here so we can get into the buttons. Wait, I have some buttons set up here. And we're going to see something else that we can do with this because uh, I just looked at HSL and RGB, but we do have other ones that we can use as well. So uh, here, what where this could actually be really useful is I have my buttons and then I have my button brand primary and secondary. And I want to create a hover state for each of them where they just get a bit darker. And so what we could do is I could come in here and I'm going to use some nesting here because if relative colors are supported, so is nesting. So we're going to do a hover uh, and a focus visible right there. Uh, just so you know, the, the ampersand here, if you're not used to nesting, would be the same as if this wasn't nested. Uh, and then I came down here and did that as a dot BTN and then my dot BTN right there. Uh, if you want to know more about nesting, I'll link to a video um, in the description. I'll have a card pop up at the top. And here with this button, what we could do is uh, let's get back to having our hover and focus there. Uh, because what I've done is I've set this up to be like my background color is this button BG and I have a default value, but then I'm setting my button BG for each one of these. And it used to be if you wanted to change the color of each one of those, you would have to map each one individually, right? You would do your brand uh, hover, your primary hover, your secondary hover. Uh, and it, of course, this depends on your color scheme and your design system and everything. So if you have very specific colors you need coming from your designers, maybe this wouldn't work. But if you're doing personal projects or you just need to have something that's, you know, works really well, um, I could just come here and we could just say that now the background color, color is going to be, and we use the relative color. So let's, this time I'm doing OK LCH because as I want, as I said, we can do this with other color modes. You can also use uh, hue, whiteness, blackness, or just the regular um, H uh, LCH if you want, but if you're using LCH, I would suggest you do the OK version of it. Uh, so we have my OK LCH and we just say from var. And in this case, I want to look at my var BG because the var BG is getting mapped over to that button BG right there. So we do var BG. Now, just like this, this is actually going to break them because we do want to now say how we're going to do it. So maybe a more practical use case here would actually be on the lightness and doing like a times 0.5. So we're getting darker uh, whenever we hover. So it goes like that. 
And right there, obviously that one's not working super well with the, the, the black text on it, but you can see how uh, we can lower the lightness of each one really, really easily. Uh, and there's, a, you know, you might also want to come on this and what I would actually suggest because it is a long declaration uh, in general is we could do something, um, just format your code. And of course you might have prettier or something else that will kick in. Um, but I like having it where I have each value on its own line, just cause I find it becomes a little bit um, easier to read. So we could have from there, we have our lightness, then we could do another calc on uh, the chroma where we're saying that this becomes like a point, I don't know, 0.75 or something. So we're also shifting that. It's gonna just, it'd just end up darkening things a little bit too. Um, it's a little bit like dropping the saturation, right? If let's just do like times 0.1 or something. So we can really see, uh, you see how it's, it's very much graying out. We're taking away the chroma, um, which is, as I said, similar uh, in concept to how saturation works, though a little bit different. Um, so we can do something like that uh, and play around with it and it can just make your life a little bit easier So you're just manipulating one custom property for all of your buttons or all of whatever it is that you want to do And this actually opens up the door for creating color schemes as well really easily uh, this is um, inspired by uh, a CSS day talk by Matthias Ott who had a really cool talk looking at some cool things uh, and I'm if whenever that video does become public I'll link it down below um, but you can see here, I just have like a base color of indigo uh, right there. And I have that set up with OKLCH. Okay, uh, and then we can just go through and we can manipulate that. This first one that I have at the top is my, my simple version, uh, which is this one here where I'm just doing the 10 down to uh, 100. And then the not so simple one, which is the second one here. And you can see they're very similar, but there's like some shifts that are going on. This one's a little bit more purpley and the, the dark's a little bit darker and stuff, but it was just to show a little bit from what um, Matthias was doing, which looked a little bit more like this with using the Pi, which we can do in CSS or sign function um, and stuff like that with more complicated calculations going on. So just to say both of them are possible. Uh, and sometimes there's some benefits to this in creating more consistent color schemes and stuff. But I'll link to this in the description if you wanna see more of it. And one other really quick example here is this nice one from the Chrome for Developers blog uh, in the article where they examine this. So I'll put a link to that in the description. I think it was by Adam Argyle, um, where you can see like this nice sort of lighter to darker thing that you'd think would be pretty straightforward, uh, similar to sort of the simple example I did at the top here. But the saturation of all of these or the chroma for all of these stays quite bright as we go through. Uh, and if you look at what they did here is as it's going through each one of those, we have the OKLCH, OK and then we're going through the different ones. We're reducing the lightness, we're decreasing the chroma, and we're also slightly rotating the hue for each one of them as well. And it actually makes it look really, really good and consistent uh, with whatever color we're using. So uh, it might seem like these sort of strange calculations that are going in, but from people who do a lot of color stuff, they're probably really happy to see that we can do this now so easily. And again, doing all of this based on one custom property, which is super cool, instead of having to have a whole bunch set up. And of course you could also use this to create custom properties like I did here, right? So, right, I have my different versions of my Indigo set up as custom properties based on that base color, which again, makes life a little bit easier. And another thing that we can do to make color schemes and play with colors and fancy stuff in colors in general with CSS is using color mix, which allows us to mix two different colors together to get a third result, which you can even do with transparent Transparent, which is kind of interesting uh, and is another way to get transparency into colors and sort of play with stuff. So if you're curious about that and want to learn more about some of the new stuff that you can do in CSS with colors, do check out that video. It is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.